Hi, this is Lisa with Coping with Yarn, and this is day, days, 31, 32, 33, and 34 of hashtag 100 days of Halloween 2023, and it's a countdown to Halloween as well as a countdown to Manic Mama Musings, um, Potiversary. So, there's a bunch of us that are putting out, um, are involved in the hashtag Halloween series, and some of us are doing movie reviews, some of us are making makes, and, oh, I should show you, I finished the bag, I need to show you it. Okay, so after I do my movie reviews, I'm going to push pause and go show you the finished product of my Annie's Karen Crochet, and then I'm going to get on I haven't had the time of really crocheting with being back to work and then um, trying to get homeschooling going <laughs> at the same time. Um, but here we are. Okay. Um, I will catch up. I will get back to Carmine the gnome. <laughs> okay. Um, and he'll have a pumpkin on him, so it's Halloween-y. Okay, so the first movie I'm going to review is called Annabelle. Um, this movie can be found on Hulu. And it was in 2014. It's TV Mature. It's directed by John Leonetti. And the cast is Annabelle Wallace. And that's not a coincidence. Um, Ward Horton, Brian Howell, and Alfre Woodard. Um, and Dexter wants to say hi. Let's see. It's about an American supernatural film based upon the claims of a real life paranormal investigators, Ed and Lorraine. And um, it's about a possessed doll who terrorizes a young couple. This one is scary. I swear, some of the PG-13 movies are scarier than rated R movies. Um, it's, it's just, it's scary in the fact that it's based off of true events. Um, the doll, it's actually not the porcelain doll. I mean, that doll that they have uh, in the Annabelle um is creepier. I guess the real doll that was possessed was a Raggedy Ann doll. And that's kind of freaky. I used to have one of those. It's like the Chucky dolls. Ah! Anyways. Um, yeah. This one gave me the goosebumps. This one actually scared me. Um, mm, this stuff scares me. I was scared. It's a good Halloween movie. <laughs> okay. Uh, the second one... And, okay, so there's, I didn't realize this, um, but there's a whole bunch of Conjuring. It's a Conjuring, there's the Conjuring series. So a whole bunch of animals, a whole bunch of Conjurings, different types. <laughs> conjuring, the Conjuring, Conjuring in Connecticut, Conjuring to the Nun. I guess that's the latest one. Um, anyways, okay, so the next one is the Conjuring in Connecticut. It's on Hulu, and it's PG-13, 2009. This is directed by Peter Corn Cornwell. And the cast is Amanda Crew and Kyle Gallner, Virginia Mad Madsen. So this is about... Um, so when this couple, their, their teenage son, um, he gets cancer. So they move to Connecticut to get uh, better treatment for him. Um, there comes a point in the movie of... Is it the cancer creating hallucinations and disturbing behavior from their kid? Or is it a haunting? What is it? What's going on? Um, so this one, let's see. I'm not sure if this one was based off of the real one. I don't know. But um, there used to be like a kid that would 
before they moved in, they moved into a really old house because it was cheap. And so, um, they're thinking maybe it's haunted. Uh, and they got it cheap because maybe it was haunted. And that's why it's so cheap. And there's scary stuff that used to happen in that house. Anyways, um, I thought it was good. It didn't scare me, but I thought it was good. Um, and then there's The Conjuring. I really like this one. 2013. This one's rated R. This was found on Max um, from Prime Video. Um, directed by James Wan. Cast is Vera Farmiga, Patrick Wilson. What? Are you live? No, I'm not. I'm not live, okay. but I'm recording. Well, then can you turn on the shower for me? <laughs> yeah. Give okay. me a second. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, Patrick Wilson's in this. Okay, so these are, this is Ed and Lorraine. So it talks, of, it shows them actually, they're demonologists. Um, one's a clairvoyant, one's a demonologist. And they perform exorcisms um, on cases of uh, where people were possessed. This one is based off a true story. And so that's why I liked it um, because of that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was good. It was a good movie. Okay, number four, uh, Ouija, The Origin of Sin. This is PG-13, 2006, and this is found on Netflix. This is directed by Mike Flanagan. Cast is Henry Thomas. If you don't know who Henry Thomas is, it's Elliot from E.T. And so it was funny seeing him. Um, Lulu Wilson, Elizabeth Reeser, Kate Siegel, and Annalise Basso. And in 1976, a widowed mother runs a scam business of like holding seances and reading palms, you know, or just stuff like that. And her and her young daughters <laughs> do this scam. Anyways, the daughter accidentally invites a ghost in. <laughs> and it goes from there. The hauntings. Um, I think, yeah. So that's all I have to say about that. I'm going to pause it for a minute and then I'll come back. All right. Okay, I'm back. So I found, I found it. I went and got my bag that I made for, from um, Annie's Caring Crochet. So there, that's all I have to say about that. Um, so that is it. Uh, I will... I'm so glad that I watched a bunch of movies when I could because it's getting harder <laughs> to watch a movie um, and do all the stuff I need to get done because there's been just lots of um, errands to run and all that after work. So it's been tough, but I'm watching a really good movie tonight. That it's one of my faves um, for, you know, scary times. Um, I will re be watching Seven tonight. If you haven't seen it, it's such a good movie. Such a disturbing movie. Um, it's about a serial killer. And Kevin Spacey is a serial killer. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm Brad Pitt's in it. And yeah. You gotta see it. And uh, Morgan Freeman's in it. And uh, Gwyneth Paltrow. <laughs> I mean, it's an all star cast. Truly. I remember when the I worked at the movie theater. Like I told you, I still think about working there sometimes. I don't know why. I just loved it so much. Freeman, I, I've already talked about that, how I just loved working at the movie theater. It was just fun, fun times. And the rush of that you get during rush time of the concession stand and the box office. I, I did, I've done like all the positions, um, you know, 
back when we used to tear the tickets, I used to be the one that would have to do the recordings on the phone. <laughs> Remember when you, this is back in the late 90s, back in the 1990s where you'd have to actually like dial a phone number and listen to <laughs> all the movie times <laughs> and the movies playing. And I used to have to count every ticket that we tore up and make a tally of it. Oh, it was a lot of work, but it was fun. Oh, yeah. The inventory. Um... I had to count the tills. Oh, I hated counting the tills. And if someone was short, then uh, I was supposed to write them up. I had to write them up. And, uh, gosh, that was really awkward being like 19 and having to do like with people that were older than me having, having to be you know, the assistant manager in training. <laughs> we were called AMTs, assistant manager in training. I actually did not like being assistant manager training. There was just too much, too much stress. Mm. Writing people up, of doing their reviews and... I think maybe because I was going to college at the same time and they wanted me to make a choice of going to college or pursuing management. I'm like, well, I'm going to go to college. But I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> it was fun before I had all the responsibilities. But I just got to be an usher, tear your tickets and tell you <laughs> which, which, movie theater to go to <laughs> and, and then cleaning up out. I even thought that was fun to clean up. Uh, we would go as fast as we can. Like we had someone that would pick up all the big garbage, like the drinks that were left and the candy boxes and all that. Someone would pick up all the garbage. Someone else would sweep all the way to the end. Someone else. Um, and then you take your little thing and sweep it up. Someone... You know, we all had, someone would mop. Um, we all had our little things that we did. It was fun. I would find cash. I thought that was so much, like I'd find five, five dollars here, a dollar there. Um, boxes of candy that were never opened. Hello? Of course I ate it. <laughs> of course I did. Uh, that was fun times. Yep. Fun times. Anyways, I still think about it. <sighs> maybe sometime I'll just go just because it's fun. Just to maybe pick up a shift. Wouldn't that be fun? Just like, just for fun, pick up a shift to do something fun. I don't know. I don't know. But I gotta say, my job right now is really fun too. So I get to play wall ball and get paid for it. And play games like Skippo and Uno. And, and then I do throw in, like, coping skills and ha social skills of, I don't know, how to lose a game. <laughs> You'd be surprised how many kids don't know how to lose. You'd be surprised. Anyways, I went off on a rant. Sorry about that. Um, I'll see you later. Have a good one. Bye!